Hello boys and girls, Miss Donna here and we are starting our new series which is Bugs, Small Creatures, Big Lessons. Let's get right into it boys and girls and here we go with Skittles. <laughs> with his two front legs like this. And that looks like he's trying to pray. Does he really pray? Yeah, probably not. But that's what he looks like and that's why he's called the praying mantis. Now the praying mantis has four other legs, so he's got a total of six legs all together. And the two in the front, they have like little spikes on their paws, on, his, on the legs so that they can hold different creatures while the praying mantis eats them. But anyways, that's the praying mantis. What's up? P-R-A-Y, lift your eyes up to the sky and pray. That, boys and girls, is what's up for today. Now, let's do some trivia. Let's see if you can get some of these bugs trivia things right. The first one, the largest insect in the world weighs how much? 1.6 ounces, 3.4 ounces, or 1.2 pounds? What do you think, boys and girls? Drum roll, the answer is 3.4 ounces. Who got that one? Let me know. Insects have their skeletons on the outside of their body. True or false? Boys and girls, you and I, our skeleton is covered up by all kinds of stuff, muscles and skin. Insects, they have their skeletons on the outside of their body? What do you think? The answer is true, boys and girls. They do have their skeletons on the outside. Most insects live less than a year, but some locusts can live up to how long? Two years? 10 years, 17 years. A bug? How long do you think it could live? 17 years, boys and girls. Praying mantis usually only live up to one year. One year, that's it. How many different types of insects are there in the world? 100,000, 1 million, over 1 million. How many insects do you think God created? 
Ugh, believe it or not, boys and girls, the answer is over one million. Over one million bugs. I'm really glad they don't all live here in the Adirondacks, even though sometimes we think they do. And then five, what is the middle part of the insect called? Is it his abdomen? Is it his thorax? Or is it his tummy? Boys and girls, the middle part is the thorax. And are daddy long legs a type of spider? We all think they are, but no, they're not. Why do lightning bugs flash? They're trying to attract a mate. They're trying to find their way home. They don't know any better. Boys and girls, when I went out the other morning, it was still dark out, and there were flashes all over Pastor in my yard. Oh my goodness, the lightning bugs were all over the place. Why were they flashing? Because they were trying to find a mate. And then, are all ladybugs ladies? No, they're not. Why do ticks suck? blood. Why? They are thirsty? They use the blood to make eggs? They don't like you. What do you think? Boys and girls, they suck your blood because they're using the blood to make their eggs. What kind of bug puts off a terrible odor if you scare it? A stink bug? A skunk bug? A Volkswagen bug? Well... I don't think any of you said the Volkswagen bug, but it is A, the stink bug. Very good, boys and girls. Good job on your bugs trivia. Let's go on. <laughs> My name is Mo, Mo Skeeto, and I'm here to tell you about my new virtual reality video game called Splat. Some games have you finding fake animals and creatures, but mine, you're finding real creatures, bugs to be precise. The slogan is, gotta catch them all entirely. <coughs> I had to add that last line in for legal reasons. Anyway, each bug kit comes with a bug guide. Bug catchers and pajamas. Oh, no, wait, those are mine. Today, we're going to do a demonstration on how to play the game. With these state of the art bug catchers, you'll find all sorts of bugs, which is a goal of the game, but the ultimate goal is to find the bad bug. Mm. When I was a kid, my mommy used to say, Good night, sleep tight, don't let the bad bugs bite. <laughs> Ever since then, I was obsessed with finding a bed bug of my very own, so I created the game. Today, we're in my backyard looking for bugs to catch. Oh, how silly of me. You're probably wondering what a bed bug looks like. Well, you see, that's the problem because I've never actually seen one, so I drew this picture of what I thought they might look like. See? Oh, hang on. I think I see something. You know what that means? Time to put on my virtual reality goggles and say, gotta catch them all entirely. I feel good about those tosses. Let's go see what we got. Applesauce. Let's see what's in the other one. Fish? Ugh, yuck. Let's see what's in this one. Oh, it looks like we did catch something. Let me check my bug guide. Hmm, let's see. A ladybug? No. A Kit Kat? No. Oh, I know what this is. This is a praying mantis. <laughs> they call it a praying mantis because its hands are in the shape that looks like it's always praying. Now, I don't know if it's really praying, but it can serve as a great reminder to us. Every time we see a praying mantis, we can be reminded to pray to God. You know, sometimes I forget how important prayer is, but that's what's so cool about bugs. They're small creatures, but they can teach us big lessons. Prayer is and always will be our connection to God, so we should pray every chance we get. 
and the praying mantis can remind us to do that. Well, I better set this little guy free back into his natural habitat, but I have heard that praying mantises are delicious. <laughs> <coughs> oh no, I was wrong. I may have gotten that fact wrong, Ugh. but I do know this. Today in your lesson, you're going to learn about when to pray, how to pray, and why you should pray. It's going to be amazing. Well, until next time, you got to catch them all entirely. Oh, boys and girls, isn't he silly? Mosquito. Well, I don't know whether you want to do that game or not. you got to catch them all entirely. Probably not. Anyways, today our lesson comes from God's Word. It's found in the book of Luke and it's in chapter 18. And it's the parable between two different men. God's Word tells us that Jesus told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a despised tax collector. Now, the Pharisee, he's the one who studied the scriptures, and he knew God's word by heart, and he taught other people about God. The other man who came to the temple, he was a tax collector. And boys and girls, back then in Bible times, if you were a tax collector, you were seen as a very bad person. You cheated, you lied, you stealed, you did things that were not pleasing to God. And so Jesus is telling this story because he wants to prove a point. And he said, two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself. And he said, I thank you, God. I am not like other people, cheaters, sinners, adulterers. I'm certainly not like tax collectors. I fast twice a week, God. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I give you a tenth of everything I own. Oh, thank you, God. I am not like those other people. <sighs> that was the Pharisee's prayer. The tax collector, he said, <sighs> he stood at a distance and he dared not even lift his eyes up to God as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow saying, oh God, be merciful to me. I am a sinner. I have done bad things. I've cheated people. Lord, please forgive me. I'm not worthy to be called yours. Lord, forgive me. I'm so sorry. Well, boys and girls, Jesus went on to say, I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves, who make themselves bigger than what they need to be, those who brag and say great big flor flowery prayers, God doesn't hear that. God rejects that. God hears your heart. And he knows what's on your heart. And if you are true in your heart, in your prayer, then God will hear that prayer. Boys and girls, prayer doesn't have to be fancy. Not at all. You just talk to God, like I said, from your heart. Talk to him like you would your best friend. 
If you need healing, say, Dear God, I need healing. If you need forgiveness, tell God, God, I'm sorry. I've done, I've said, I've thought, whatever it is. And God will forgive you. It doesn't matter the words. It matters what comes from your heart. And so that takes us to our next part. We're going to talk about the power of prayer, boys and girls. And I think before we do that, we're going to hear our verse. Oops, no, we're not. All righty then. The power of prayer. We begin by looking at the praying mantis. And although the praying mantis probably doesn't pray, whenever you see a praying mantis, you can be reminded that God wants us to pray always. You know, boys and girls, what is the reason that we pray? It says here, why should I pray? What's the reason? Well, boys and girls, the main reason we pray is because we want to stay connected to God. Now, how many of you have a best friend? I know a lot of you do. Well, boys and girls, do you talk with your best friend? Like, on a regular basis? Like, probably before COVID, you saw your friend every day at school and you wanted to talk to him. And so now that COVID's happened, maybe you talk to him on the phone or, or maybe you Skype him or maybe you guys go out to each other's houses. But boys and girls, you stay connected because you love your best friend. They're your best friend. Well, guess what? God wants to be your best friend too. He wants you to stay connected with him. And do you know, if you don't talk to him, pray to him, he feels sad. Just like if you didn't spend time with your best friend, your best friend would feel sad. Boys and girls, why should you pray? You should pray to stay connected to God. And then, okay, Miss Donna, I know now why I should pray, but when should I pray? Oh, boys and girls, that's a good question. When should we pray? Should we pray only before our meals? That's the only time we pray. No, <laughs> wrong answer. I know, we should pray only at bedtime. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Amen. No, remember, God wants what's in our heart. Boys and girls, we should pray all the time. Our verse that we're going to hear in a little bit is keep on praying. Keep on talking to God. Stay connected. Boys and girls, we should pray all the time. Now, that doesn't mean that we walk around and ignore other people and just pray over and over and over. It means that every chance we get, we should talk to God and let him talk to us. We need to be able to listen. We need to be able to read his word and, and see what he's trying to say to us. If Jesus is our best friend, we shouldn't just talk to him when we want something or if we're in trouble. That's not what a best friend does. No, boys and girls, we need to talk to him every chance we get. Okay, so we know why we should pray to stay connected to God. We know when we should pray, keep on praying. The next question is, how should I pray? Oh, that's such an important question. And some people have different ideas on what's the best way to pray or what's the right way to pray. But you know, boys and girls, we need to pray from our heart. Pray, prayer is just me talking to God, just like I'm talking to you. It's just being honest and open with God. You don't have to use big, big words you don't have to do these and thous. You can if you want. That doesn't mean it's wrong. 
if that's what's in your heart. But boys and girls, you got to pray just like you would if you were talking to your best friend. Let God know. I know a lot of people are scared. I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to say. Well, we're going to go over it like this. You can start out by P-R-A-Y, pray. P stands for praise. We praise God and we thank him for who he is. He is our heavenly father who created us. And then R stands for repent, to turn away, to admit your sin and turn away from those things that you know are not pleasing to God. And then A, ask for others. People around you, maybe there's someone that is hurting, that needs to be healed or needs, needs God in their life. Pray for them. And then lastly, why you? What's on your heart? What's bothering you? What do you need God to help you with? This is how we should pray. Boys and girls, I hope that this has been helpful for you. It's, is this the only way to pray? Absolutely not. But this is a start. Let's listen now to our power verse. <laughs> what valuable lessons they might give us in order for us to become better Christians. Today's bug is the praying mantis. Now, this bug is very interesting because of the way it looks. You see, it has very big bulbous eyes attached to a triangular head connected to a elongated body with wings on the back. And it also has two forearms. When I mean forearms, I mean the two arms in front, not the four on the bottom, which means there's six arms total, which are actually legs, but they look like they're praying, but not all six, only the two forearms, which are the two, not the four, I think. Probably. I don't know. But what that does remind me is the power verse for today, which is, keep on praying. First Thessalonians 5.17. Bazinga! That power verse was superlative. Now, what I need is for all the boys to stand to their feet and say the power verse on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Keep on praying. First Thessalonians 5.17. That was fantastic, boys. You may sit down. Now, all the girls stand to your feet and say the power verse on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. Keep on praying. First Thessalonians 5.17. Fantastic job. You may be seated. That power verse is a good reminder of how important it is to constantly be in prayer. When your life is good, you should be praying. When your life is bad, you should be praying. When you accidentally mix concoction X with concoction Y and you accidentally make a mutating caterpillar, you should really be praying. Trust me. Now, I need everyone to stand to their feet and say the power verse on the count of three. One. Two, three, keep on praying. First Thessalonians 5.17. Excellent job, everyone. You may be seated. Well, that's it for me. I'm back off to the lab to study another bug. Well, I'll be reading books like a bookworm and searching for articles on the worldwide spiderweb. Until next time, this is Professor Buzzby McFly.